So, hey, listen, it's a bear market, and you've probably got a bunch of JPEGs sitting in your wallet doing, well, doing nothing. Mo utility, am I right? Well, what can you do with them? Well, you could get something like this, a lovely painting made of your NFT. Isn't that delightful? Yeah, you could. Or you could put them to work. Now, we looked at Bend Dow and taking a loan out, basically capital efficiency for your NFTs about a month or so ago. But today we're looking at passive income using the idle assets in your wallet using NFTX. It's pretty simple and it's coming up. There are a few platforms that put security first while helping you make the most out of your crypto. On Nexo, you can buy crypto with a card in seconds and automatically start earning interest paid out daily. If you want to restructure your portfolio when the time comes, jump on Nexo's instant exchange and get rewards on every swap. Borrowing against your crypto without selling is easy with rates starting at 0%. Nexo is the place for your crypto where you can securely buy, earn, exchange, borrow and store your assets through the market cycles. Visit nexo.io and play the long game right. So this is nothing particularly new actually. Uh, it's called inventory staking and NFTX released it back in 20th of January of this year. And it's basically kind of like single-sided staking for your NFTs. And to understand this properly, you kind of have to understand how the normal staking works on NFTX. So there's a whole kind of zapping process that happens when you add your NFT to a vault, but they've handily broken it down and let's go through it now. So here's what happens when you stake an NFT normally in what they're calling liquidity staking, which is where you add the same amount of ETH to the value of your NFT into a pool the same way you would add liquidity on an AMM. So what happens is the NFT is added, that NFT select is added into the NFTX vault. It then mints a token, ERC20 token, that represents the value of that NFT. Then the ERC20 plus ETH is added to the pool, and that gives you a Sushi liquidity pool token that represents your position, your stake in that liquidity pool. That SLP is then staked on NFTX, which generates another token, which is the X token ETH, which is then uh, added to your wallet. And then you earn a yield of all the vault fees that are generated on that vault. Now, in the past, 100% of the vault fees pretty much went to the stakers. The platform itself, NFTX, does take a fee. Uh, and the other thing to remember, as they say here, is when you add a token to the vault, you are giving up ownership of that vault so that anyone else can buy it or redeem it from the vault. Now, if you have a floor asset, that's absolutely fine. Maybe you don't care. It's essentially turning these floor NFTs into fungible assets in terms of we don't really care which one we have. It's just representing an index of the floor value that we are interested in. So let's have a look at the difference between that and inventory staking. So inventory staking, uh, they opened up earlier this year, as I said. And the, the goal of this was really to make it easier for people to add inventory to the vault because the more inventory there is, the more likely it is that people will go and actually buy or swap or sell from the vaults themselves because well, there's more choice. If there's more choice, then it's more likely that someone will find the one that they actually want. So that's why they've opened up inventory staking. So the change to the ProScore rewards are thus, um, they say basically 100% of all fees associated with vault activity were distributed to liquidity stakers. This changes to now 80% of all fees are distributed to liquidity stakers. That's what we looked at before. And then 20% of all fees are distributed to inventory stakers. And this, fleece, this fee split is set protocol wide and cannot be changed per vault. So um, the actual reward you'll get on a vault depends... I guess, on the popularity of the vault and the balance of people who want them and versus those who are staking them. But it's certainly 20% of those fees could be, if you're in the right vault, pretty interesting. And it's passive. Now, there are some interesting differences between that and liquidity staking, so let's look at those now. So as I said, the yield percentage for inventory staking is 20%. Liquidity staking is 80%. Do you need ETH for inventory staking? No, you do not. Only the JPEG itself. Is it auto compounding? Well, for inventory staking, yes, it is. And then the big one, <clears throat> the risk of impermanent loss for inventory staking is zero. You will not be exposed to that. If you are familiar with AMMs and adding liquidity, impermanent loss can really bite you in the ass if the value of um, one side or other goes up or goes down too much. And will you earn sushi fees? 
No, you will not. So let's have a look at how this will work. It's actually really super simple. So let's take a look at, let's look at doodles. So here are the doodles, and these are all the doodles that are currently in the doodle vault. This up here will give you the doodle token name. We're going to be looking at that in a second and as to how we find it on Sushi. But there's a whole bunch of doodles in the vault. Not a lot. Is that all of them? Oh, no, here we go. Not a huge amount, but some. And you might find a doodle here that you particularly jam with and you might want to buy it. So you could buy it directly from the vault. Uh, you can sell one of your own doodles into the vault. I don't have any at the moment, so that's fine. You can also swap um, one for one. And of course, you have to be very careful that you only swap your floor ones because if you've got a rare one, uh, you don't want to be swapping them into this vault. These vaults are really designed to capture the value at the floor level. And then we get to this one here, stake. Now, I don't have any eligible doodles at the moment for staking, but here you can see in red, this is the inventory staking reward. And then this greeny purple one here, that's the liquidity staking reward. So if you want to add your doodle into the inventory pool, you will be eligible for a 21.71% APR, which is calculated based on the previous 30 days of activity annualized. Now, <clears throat> you have to bear in mind that you only earn fees if people actually interact with the pool. So are people buying, selling doodles? Are they interested in swapping doodles? Well, doodles is a pretty popular collection, so <clears throat> probably yes. But there are a whole bunch of different assets here that you could be um, selling into. We've got pudgy penguins here. Let's have a look at that. I actually do have some pudgy penguins. So what would happen if I staked them? Let's have a look. 9.7% for inventory staking, 30.61% for liquidity staking. Well, that's interesting enough. And what about, oh, I have some expansion punks. Been wondering what to do with these. I bought them on a whim, as you do, aped in. And now, like, what do I do with them? So let's have a look at the staking. 6.6% for doing nothing. I mean, they're not worth very much, so I probably wouldn't bother, but I could. And yeah, interesting. So the one I want, actually really wanted to look at was uh, mutant apes. There's a lot of mutant apes, but not so many in the, in the vault, as it turns out. So what is the staking reward on these? Well, this is where it gets interesting. So the inventory staking, 48.79%, and the liquidity staking only 26.55%. So it's actually a lot more preferable to inventory stake on mutants. It, this was the only one I could find where this was the case. And I guess it reflects how desirable mutants are. And then when we look at the pool, how few of them are actually available. So it gives you a sense of kind of the value in the marketplace of mutants. Now, if you want to actually go ahead and inventory stake your asset, what you're going to do is go up to the mint and stake here. I'd obviously have to select that. And then it will give you the different um, parameters here. So what it says is you are exchanging one mutant AB Yacht Club NFT for one MAYC token. This token can earn yield and is able to claim NFTs from the vault. So this token will give you the right to claim any other mutant from the vault. But what you will do is give up your claim on your specific mutant. So if I particularly wanted this mutant, and as it turns out, I do, then it wouldn't be a good idea for me to put it in the vault. But if I didn't care about it, well, then that would be absolutely fine. Other thing to bear in mind is there is a lock time here, and you will have to approve and then stake. So you will incur, of course, ETH gas fees when you do that. Now, if we then go to SushiSwap, because we have this token, MAYC that represents the claim on, a, on an asset in the vault, we can swap it for ETH immediately. So you can realize some ETH value straight away. Um, so that gives you another way of taking a floor asset and getting the floor value out of it straight away. But what happens if we actually search for that MAYC token? It's not there. Well, that's interesting. So what do we do? Well, we can manage the token list. And as it turns out, there is an NFTX version two token list and it has 41 tokens on it. We can actually go there and view the list. And here it is. And you'll see Board Ape Kennel Club, Board Ape Yacht Club, but no Mutant Ape Yacht Club. And that is because this was last updated a year ago. So if we want to find the MAYC token on SushiSwap, how are we going to do it? Well, click on the info tab here, 
copy that there, go to the token tab here, paste that in here, and there you will see the Mutant Aid Yacht Club token result. And then you can swap it for ETH or any other token that you might want, and that's how you do it. Uh, so bear in mind that every time you interact with a pool, you will incur a fee, so you might find yourself uh, like a tiny fraction short of a whole token. You need a, a whole token in order to redeem it for an NFT. And if you do find yourself in that position, then you might just need to go to Sushi, buy a tiny fraction more of that token to make it up to a complete whole one, and then you will be able to redeem it for any NFT you like in the pool. So that is how you can earn passive income on your NFTs. Obviously, the more popular the token, the more likely it is you're going to be able to do that, but you'd be surprised what other tokens are in there. And if it's just sitting in your wallet doing nothing, then maybe you've got nothing to lose. Um, but certainly the mutants, when I looked at it, 48%, not bad at all. So that's it for today. That's our tutorial. If you have any suggestions for us to cover in tutorials, please do drop them in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. It really will help through this bear market. Thanks for joining. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.